Welcome to Brainwaves, your go-to source for fascinating facts and information. In this video, we'll be exploring some of the rarest insects in the world, creatures so elusive and unique that you may never have heard of them before. Did you know that insects make up the largest class of animals on Earth, with over a million documented species? That's a lot of bugs. But despite their incredible diversity, some insects are so rare that they're almost impossible to find. Some of these rare insects have fascinating life cycles, unique behaviors, and incredible adaptations that have allowed them to survive in some of the most extreme environments on Earth. So join us as we take a closer look at some of the rarest and most incredible insects on the planet. The Lord Howe Island Stick Insect, also known as the Tree Lobster, is a unique and remarkable insect that looks like a large, shiny black stick. It is a nocturnal insect that spends the day hiding in tree trunks or under tree bark and emerges at night to feed on leaves and flowers. What makes this insect truly amazing is its ability to lay eggs by itself without the need for a mate. This is called parthenogenesis, and it's an extremely rare trait in the insect world. The resulting offspring are always female and are genetic clones of their mother. The insect's exoskeleton also provides it with excellent camouflage against predators, making it one of the best hidden insects in the world. Despite their name, tree lobsters are not closely related to real lobsters, and their appearance and behavior are truly unique. The Lord Howe Island stick insect was once thought to be extinct as a result of invasive species that were introduced to the insect's native habitat. However, in 2001, a small colony of these insects was discovered on Ball's Pyramid, a rocky islet off the coast of Australia in the Pacific Ocean. The islet is only 550 meters in length and 200 meters wide, and the insects were hiding in just one small bush. Biologists quickly sprung into action to try and revive the species. After years of careful study and breeding, a small but thriving population of Lord Howe Island stick insects was established at the Melbourne Zoo in Australia. The ultimate goal is to reintroduce the insects back into their natural habitat on Lord Howe Island, but this is a delicate and time-consuming process. The Lord Howe Island Board is also working hard to create and maintain the perfect environment on the island. Reintroducing an endangered species back into the wild is never a simple task, but the Lord Howe Island stick insect has a team of dedicated conservationists working hard to ensure its survival. The conservation of the Lord Howe Island stick insect is a top priority for scientists and conservationists around the world. The biggest threat to the survival of this rare insect is habitat loss and introduced predators, such as rats and mice. Over the years, the native vegetation on Lord Howe Island has been cleared for agriculture, logging, and development, leaving the insects with fewer and fewer places to hide. Invasive species, like rats and mice, have also made life difficult for the insects, as these predators feed on the eggs and young of the insects. To protect the Lord Howe Island stick insect and its habitat, several conservation efforts have been undertaken. These include habitat restoration programs, captive breeding programs, and predator eradication programs, among others. The Lord Howe Island Board and the Australian government have also been involved in several conservation initiatives to promote the recovery of the insect species. With dedicated conservation efforts, the future of the Lord Howe Island stick insect is looking brighter than ever. Wallace's giant bee, also known as the Raja Ofu, the king of bees, is the largest bee in the world, native to the Indonesian island of North Moluccas. It's about the size of a human thumb and has a wingspan of up to two and a half inches. The bee is easily identified by its large and impressive mandibles and distinctive black and yellow stripes. Unlike social bees, the Wallace's giant bee is solitary, preferring to live alone in termite mounds or tree resin crevices. The bee feeds on nectar and tree resin, using its strong jaws to break off small pieces. Wallace's giant bee was first discovered by the British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace in 1858, who described the bee as a large black wasp-like insect, with immense jaws like a stag beetle. After the initial discovery, the bee disappeared from scientific records for over a century. It wasn't until 1981 that an entomologist named Adam Messer rediscovered the bee in Indonesia's North Moluccas. However, the Wallace's giant bee remained largely elusive and mysterious. 
no live specimens had ever been observed. That was until 2019 when a team of scientists and photographers discovered a group of living Wallace's giant bees in an Indonesian jungle. The discovery caused amazement among researchers and was seen as a ray of hope, not only for the bee species but for biodiversity conservation in general. The observation of live specimens provided scientists with an opportunity to study the bees' behavior and biology more closely, and to work towards conservation of this incredible insect. Wallace's giant bee is classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, due to habitat loss and destruction. The bee is mainly threatened by deforestation and logging activities, which destroy its natural habitat and food sources. Additionally, hybrid bees that are more aggressive and competitive, predators, and insect collectors are other factors contributing to the decline in population. Conservation efforts are currently underway to protect this unique and rare bee species. These efforts include raising awareness about the bee's importance, reducing habitat destruction, preserving natural areas, and studying the bee's biology and behavior. Researchers are working together with local communities, governments, and conservation organizations to ensure the survival of this magnificent bee. The Sierra Nevada Blue Butterfly, also known as the Niña Azul Butterfly, is a beautiful and rare butterfly species native to the western United States. It is a small butterfly, with a wingspan of about 1.5 inches, and it has a beautiful bright blue coloration on its wings with black spots. The butterfly's habitat is restricted to high elevation areas, such as alpine meadows and mountain ridges in the Sierra Nevada mountains. The butterfly prefers to live in areas where its food sources, such as lupins and violets, are readily available. The butterfly is most active during the warmer months, from late spring to early fall when its food sources are abundant and temperatures are favorable. The life cycle of the Sierra Nevada blue butterfly begins with a tiny egg, which hatches into a caterpillar that feeds on the leaves of its host plants. It pupates in a chrysalis, which hangs from a leaf or stem until the adult butterfly emerges. The adult butterfly feeds on nectar from flowers and mates to produce the next generation of eggs. One interesting behavior of the Sierra Nevada blue butterfly is that it tends to stay low to the ground, preferring to fly just a few feet above the vegetation. This behavior could be an adaptation to its alpine habitat, where wind gusts can be strong and unpredictable. The butterfly is mostly active during the day, with males often seen patrolling for mates in the early afternoon. Female butterflies lay their eggs on host plants, and the process starts again. The Sierra Nevada blue butterfly is considered one of the rarest butterflies in the world, and it is listed as an endangered species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN. The butterfly's population has declined rapidly due to a variety of factors, including habitat loss, climate change, and human activity. The butterfly's habitat is being threatened by logging, mining, and other development activities, which destroy the vegetation and the butterfly's food sources. Climate change is causing shifts in the butterfly's habitat range and has led to changes in vegetation patterns, further threatening the butterfly's survival. Scientists and conservationists are working hard to protect the butterfly through habitat conservation, captive breeding programs, and public education and outreach. The conservation efforts aim to ensure that the rare and beautiful Sierra Nevada blue butterfly will continue to survive and flourish for many generations to come. The Cleveland Bay Puriri moth, also known as the ghost moth, is a fascinating species of moth which is native to New Zealand. It is a large and beautiful moth, with a wingspan of up to 25 centimeters, and its wings are covered in a beautiful pattern of white, gray and brown scales. The moth's habitat is restricted to the dense forests of Northland in the North Island of New Zealand, where its preferred host plant, the puriri tree, grows in abundance. The Cleveland Bay puriri moth is mostly active at night and is known for its elusive nature, making it challenging to spot in its natural habitat. The Cleveland Bay Puriri moth has a fascinating life cycle that can last for several years. The adult moth lays its eggs on the leaves of the Puriri tree, and the eggs hatch into caterpillars, which then burrow into the bark of the tree. The caterpillars spend most of their time in the bark, feeding on the tree's inner tissue until they are ready to pupate. The pupa then emerges as a fully grown adult moth. 
The moths are mostly active during the summer months, from November to April, and are attracted to light sources at night. The moths have a distinctive flight pattern, hovering above the ground and then abruptly flying upwards in a spiral motion before descending again. Like most moths, the Cleveland Bay Puriri moth feeds on nectar from flowers using its long, coiled proboscis. The Cleveland Bay Puriri moth is considered a threatened species, and its populations have declined due to habitat loss, deforestation, and climate change. The Puriri tree, which is necessary for the moth's survival, has been affected by logging and land use change, leading to a decline in the moth's population. Additionally, invasive species such as possums and rats prey on the caterpillars and the pupating moths. Conservation efforts are underway to protect the Cleveland Bay Puriri moth, including habitat restoration and protection, captive breeding programs, and public education and outreach. The New Zealand government has also listed the moth as a protected species under the Wildlife Act, which makes it illegal to harm or kill the moth. These efforts aim to restore the moth's population and ensure that the species can continue to thrive in its natural habitat. The Delhi Sands flower-loving fly is a rare and unique species of fly that is found in the sandy habitats of Southern California in the United States. The fly is small, with a length of only about 6 mm, and it has a distinctive black and white striped pattern on its abdomen. It is known as a flower-loving fly because it feeds on nectar and pollen from flowers, such as desert dandelions. The fly's habitat is restricted to the Delhi Sands Formation, a rare and unique sand dune habitat that is found only in certain areas of Southern California. The Delhi Sands flower-loving fly is adapted to this specific habitat and is dependent on the availability of its host plant, the desert Cymopteris, which is also rare and limited to this region. The Delhi Sands flower-loving fly has an interesting life cycle that starts when female flies lay their eggs in the soil near the roots of the desert Cymopteris plant. The eggs hatch into larvae, which then feed on root nodules of the host plant. The larvae pupate in the soil, and the adult flies emerge from the pupae when conditions are favorable. The flies are most active during the day, when they feed on the nectar and pollen of flowers. The Delhi Sands flower-loving fly plays an essential role in the pollination of the desert Cymopteris plant, which is the fly's primary host plant. The flies are attracted to the yellow flowers of the desert Cymopteris plant, where they feed and mate. They also use visual cues to locate potential host plants and mate using a unique mating display. The Delhi Sands flower-loving fly is a critically endangered species, with its populations declining rapidly due to habitat loss and fragmentation caused by human activities such as urbanization, agriculture, and sand mining. The insect's habitat, the Delhi Sands Formation, has been heavily impacted by these activities, as well as by invasive species and changes to the natural fire regime. The Delhi Sands flower-loving fly is also at risk from the use of pesticides and herbicides, which can harm the insect's habitat and food sources. Conservation efforts are underway to protect the Delhi Sands flower-loving fly, including habitat restoration and protection, captive breeding and monitoring programs, and public education and outreach. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service has listed the fly as an endangered species and has designated critical habitat areas for its protection. These efforts aim to ensure the survival of this rare and unique insect species for future generations. And that concludes our exploration of some of the rarest insects in the world. As we've seen, these fascinating creatures come in all shapes and sizes, with incredible adaptations that have helped them survive in some of the most extreme environments on Earth. From the giant bee rediscovered in Indonesia to the tree lobster of Lord Howe Island, these rare insects remind us that there is still so much to be discovered and learned about the natural world. However, as with many other species of flora and fauna, these rare insects are facing huge threats, including habitat loss, climate change, and overharvesting. As responsible stewards of our planet, it's important that we take steps to protect these rare insects and their habitats for future generations to enjoy. So, if you ever come across one of these rare insects in the wild, remember how special they are and how lucky you are to have to witness one of the rarest and most beautiful creatures on Earth.